Hello, darling. How are you? I hope you are having a fabulous day so far. Today, I'm going to show you five easy nail art designs that you can do on your dominant hand. So with your non-dominant hand. This is also going to be excellent for people who maybe aren't super duper artistic or maybe don't necessarily have the fine motor skills that some have to create the ridiculous nail art that's out there. You don't have to do this with your non-dominant hand. You can take these designs and, and, and do them with your dominant hand. It's just an idea, just a helpful suggestion of cool nail art ideas you can do with your non-dominant hand that won't take four hours because not everybody wants to spend four hours on their nails like me, right? So uh, let's just jump right into it. Five nail art designs you can do with your non-dominant Okay, hand. so as you can see, the base colors have already been put on the nail. I didn't see the need to bore you with that. I am, however, going to show you this easy marbling technique on my thumbnail. So after curing the first layer of blue, I'm just going in with a second layer and I'm not going to cure this one. And then coming in with a white gel polish, I've cleaned a lot of the product off of the brush and I'm just going over the blue with light strokes just through the polish back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, creating a striation of blue and white. I'm going to turn my brush over and continue to do the same thing. And once I'm happy with the striations in my nail, I'm going to turn the brush sideways and just sort of flick it up and down my nail, just sort of creating a really cool, simple marble technique. And don't forget to clean off your brush before putting it back in the white. You don't wanna cross contaminate colors like that. And going in with that same white gel polish, but this time on a palette with a dotting tool, I'm just going to dot clumps of, well, dots around my nail basically trying to form clouds. There is no mistake, clouds are literally every shape. But, because it's on a nail, we're going to try and go for that typical cartoony, fluffy cloud. So I'm trying to make them fatter in the middle and thinner on either side. Um, a lot of cartoony clouds are also sort of flat on the bottom. And a really good reference for this would be the Simpsons intro. Those are kind of exactly what we're going for. The only thing I would suggest is make sure you don't touch two clouds together. If that happens, you're probably going to lose the fact that it's, that it's clouds. We're, we won't be able to read that on a nail anymore. We'll lose the design. Um, so if that means you only put two clouds on a nail, that means you only put two clouds on a nail. It's really not that big of a deal. Just have fun with it. And once all of the clouds have been cured in the lamp, I'm just going in with a matte top coat because the sky's not glossy. But um, And I'm gonna cure that in the lamp and there you have it, a cute little sky cloud nail. So now I have four different gel polishes on my palette, including the same white from earlier, along with a light bubblegummy pink, a brighter, darker pink, and a pinky berry toned color. But you can use whatever color palette you want.
So starting on a white nail, and I'm using the lightest color in the color palette, and the same dotting tool as earlier, I'm just dotting clusters of dots around my nail again. However, because this is a camouflage design, they don't have to be as specific as the clouds did. These can be in any pattern, um, they can touch each other. We're just trying to recreate what camouflage looks like on a nail. And really, that's just a bunch of blobs of colors together. So once I am finished with the pink and it has cured in the lamp, I'm going in with the brighter pink, the darker pink, and I'm just doing the exact same thing, just dotting the color around the nail. You can go right over top of the lighter pink, go right over top of the white, and again, if these colors touch, it's no big deal. We're just trying to cover the nail in blobs of color. And now going in with our darkest color of the color palette, the berry toned pinky color. And exact same thing, just working the color over the white and over the other two pinks, creating weird blob dot pattern things. And the more colors you put on, the more you'll start to notice it come together as camouflage. Remember to cure in between each color, otherwise you'll end up with a marble, which will still be beautiful, but not what we're looking for. And finally, again with that white, um, we're just covering up some of the weird looking spots that we ended up creating where colors just didn't look good together. Or you might notice there are some dips in your nail from layering two different nail polishes on top of each other. We're just going to fill that up with some of this white gel polish. And once I'm happy with the polish placement, I'm going to top coat with a glossy top coat. You can obviously use matte. I'm going to cure it in my lamp and we are finished with a camouflage nail. Okay, onto my ring finger, we're making an egg. <laughs> a fried egg, if you will. So, I'm going in with the same white gel polish as earlier, starting kind of in the middle of my nail and working outward in circular motions. I'm just floating the product further outward, creating a fried egg shape. So, this does not have to be perfect at all. In fact, it's better if it's not. Um, so, I just keep adding a little bit more product the further out from the center I want to go.
Okay, time for the yolk, which is basically a big old yellow dot in the middle of the white. I mixed up some acrylic paint because I didn't have a yellow gel polish that I wanted to use. Um, but this color ended up being a little bit too creamy and buttery. Um, so you'll see in a few seconds I ended up putting a much brighter yellow on top of it once this dried. And once the paint is dry, I'm going in with a matte top coat. And this one I'm doing on purpose because I want the yolk to be shiny. So you can see here, I'm taking out a tiny little dollop of top coat and going in with my same dotting tool. And I'm just dotting the product over top of the yellow yolk. This is to create a little bit of shine on it and to raise it a little bit, like as if it was a real yolk. I didn't do too much product on it because I'm not that great with my left hand and I didn't want to end up putting gel polish all over the white part too. So it ended up being flatter than I anticipated but I'm still happy with it. Alright so on my pinky I have white gel polish cured and I'm taking my same dotting tool with some black gel polish and I am dotting little cow prints. These are pretty similar to the clouds, but again, we're not extending them outward. We're keeping everything sort of centralized. And again, there really is no mistake. Cow prints can be any shape and size. I would just maybe try not touching them because again, we'll lose what they are on the nail. And when you're doing the cow print design, try to make sure that you do a few spots kind of coming off of the nail. So then that way the cow pattern goes like it's going off the nail, like it's a continuous pattern and doesn't just stop at the edge of your nail. And I'll be top coating my cow print with a glossy no wipe top coat, but you could obviously do matte. This would be incredibly cute, matte. Okay, so our fifth and final design, it's also the most difficult one, it is the alien. So, I'm starting with a black background and a minty green gel polish, but you can use whatever green gel polish you'd like. And I am starting in the middle, topper part, topper? Eh, part of my nail, and I'm creating the image that I'm going to want. So I want it wider at the top, and I want it very narrow at the bottom. So I'm putting that on the nail immediately. And then I can continue to add product and stretch the product out until it's big enough to be an alien head. So once I get the product on there and start tickling it out towards the edges, it really starts to look like an alien head. As long as you keep the product in control and move it about slowly, it shouldn't be a problem. 
So once I get to the point where I'm happy with the shape, I just start to tidy up the edges until it is perfect how I want it. Okay, so now going in with a detail brush and the same black gel polish as the cow print, I'm just going to take my brush and you see how there's kind of that blob of paint on the end? I'm just going to press that on an angle where I want his eye. And by doing that, I should be able to create the same eye on the other side because I'm just using the brush and the angle of the brush and the product on the brush. Woo! I hope that made sense to you. Once I'm happy with the shape of the eyes, I just take the very tip of my brush and dot two teeny itty beady baby nostrils underneath his eyes. Then I'm going to top coat with a glossy top coat and that is the final nail. And there you have it my darling. The easiest five designs I could come up with to do with your non-dominant hand. As you can see with most of these designs, mistakes just make them better. Who doesn't love that? Let me know in the comments below. Do you actually put designs on your dominant hand or do you just leave it with a plain color? Or do you do a simplified version of what is on your non-dominant hand? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment down below. Fill me with knowledge. I hope you enjoyed this video and possibly even learned something. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up go ahead and subscribe. And as always, all social media links that you might be interested in will be linked down below in the description box, along with some other videos and playlists that you also might be interested in. Also, check the eye, because I'm going to link some things up there. And there's probably some videos up on the screen right now that you can click on if you want to continue watching. I hope you have a very, very, very fabulous day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!